سبيل العليم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم It is with deep sense of duty and high resolve grateful and being showing our gratitude to Almighty God for giving us this day to attend this important event as the Ariwa House marks 11th time of this lecture. It is my singular honor and privilege to welcome the distinguished guest of honor, His Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Mala Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, Grand Commander of the Order, our uh, Grand Commander of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who is ably represented here today by very one of us. I add that I added that very one because Professor Gambari is truly the son of Ariwa and Nigeria. The choice of this distinguished Nigerian as chief of staff was the greatest thing that happened to this country. His wealth of experience at the United Nations and has been President Buhari's ally for a very long time. So we would like to welcome our distinguished guests, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, Equally, we acknowledge and welcome the Chairman Northern Governors Forum, His Excellency Simon Bakola Long, the Executive Governor of uh, Plateau State, and incidentally, the guest speaker for this occasion. <laughs> Permit me also to acknowledge the Chief Host the Executive Governor of Kaduna State, Malam Ahmed, Nasr Ahmed El Rufai, who is heavily represented by Dr. Hadiza Salwa Balarabi, the Deputy Governor of Kaduna State. We have also in our midst Executive Governors of Jigawa, His Excellency Malam Badura Ubakar. Your Excellency, you're welcome. His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kwara State, Malam Abrahman Abrazak. His Excellency, the Executive Governor, Mishikaba, the Kepi State Governor, Distinguished Senator Abubakar Bagudo. Honorable Ministers here present. I've been told that some of the ministers that are being for this occasion are yet to arrive, but we will acknowledge them as they come. <laughs> Chairman of the occasion, His Excellency and Senator Asiwaju Ahmed. Bola Tinubu. Your Excellencies, Deputy Governors of Kogi State, Edward Onoja, and uh, Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Ondo State, His Excellency, Mr. Lucky. You're welcome, sir. Members of the National Assembly here are present, distinguished senators, and members of the House of Representatives. His Excellency, former Governor of Kano State, Jagora, Dr. Rabiu Musa Konkosu, you are most welcome. The Chief of Defense Staff, who is heavily represented here today, the Chief of Air Staff is equally here with us, 
as MPLE represented and the Chief of Army Staff, Heads of settlements and Agencies, His Highness, the, the representative of the IG, thank you so much, you are most welcome. His Highness, the Heads of Parasitals. His, uh, His Highness, the Shehu Obarno. His Highness, Malam Umar, Alaji Umar, Ibn Garbe Al Kanemi, who is the Royal Father of the Day. The Vice Chancellor of Amadou Bello University, Professor Kabir Bala. Second fee to the state government here present. Erudite scholars, Director Ariwa House and former directors, serving and retired military and paramilitary officers here present, women and youth. Ladies and gentlemen, it is really an honor over and above the ordinary process to have the array of personalities here today. Arewa House is very significant, not only to the northern Nigeria, but to the entire country. Over the years, these lectures have taken place, and people have been selected. And today, we are most happy to have the caliber of personalities in our midst. Without wasting much of our time, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, may I invite Dr. Khalid Abubakar, the Secretary General of the Jamaat al Nasrul Islam, to commit us to God for his love, for his divine protection. In the name of Allah, the exceedingly merciful, beneficent and compassionate. We thank you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for having gathered us here today, this morning for this very important uh, program, which seeks to bring us together as the Ariwas and Nigerians we ask you, Allah, to bless this occasion. Guide us aright. Relieve us of all trying times that we are passing through. Keep us together. We beg you. We humble ourselves before you to relieve us of the incessant nagging problem of insecurity in this country and most especially in the North. We have no might and men, we have no wisdom to do this, but we take refuge in you, begging you and asking you to put us together and make this trouble, this nightmare, a history in the quickest time possible. We also ask you to keep our country together Relieve us of all the troubles. Give us the food to eat and give us what we need to continue our lives as we pass this trying time. And may this program be a stepping step for keeping us together. May Allah guide us aright. Allah will ask you to guide our leaders. Let them be truthful and let them do that which they have sworn to do in delivering the evidence of democracy make like meaningful bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin ar-rahman ar-rahim maliki yawm ad-din iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in ihdina as-siraq al-mustaqim صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين 
وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد may your name be ever glorified forever and ever سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يسفون وسلام على المسلمين الحمد لله رب العالمين Thank you so much. Now that we have prayed, but before I invite Thank you so much. Now that we have prayed, but before I invite the first speaker, may I quickly acknowledge the presence of uh, Anaji Muhammad Sabiu Baba, the Secretary to the State Government of Bauchi State, who is here representing His Excellency the Governor of Bauchi State. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, before we start, it appears some of us are still a bit gloomy. Can we please look at the person next to you? Because of Corona now, we cannot shake. But just look at the person next to you, right to your hand, and tell him that please, peace be on to you, please. Let us exchange and present his peace. Please. <laughs> Thank you so much. May God be with us. Your residencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, may I invite for the welcome address by the host, Professor Kabiru Bala, the Vice Chancellor at Montebello University, Zari, the VC, please. Your Excellency, the President, Commander, the Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Mohamed Buhari, represented by the Chief of Staff, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, who had a distinguished and full career at the Montebello University area. The Chairman of the Education, Your Excellency, Bola Ahmed Chinubu, Please permit me to stand on the protocol already established. It is my special privilege and pleasure to welcome you on behalf of Amadibello University to the 11th Annual Memorial Lecture in honor of Al-Haji Samadibello, KBE, GCO, and MHA in Sedona of Sokoto, the premier, late premier of Northern region of Nigeria. You will recall that since 1994, Ariel House has kept the tradition of organizing the annual memorial lecture with a view to immortalizing the legacies of unity in diversity and the spirit of one indivisible entity based on justice and equity which the Premier stood and died for. The lecture series also served as a medium for discourse on matters of public and national interest. The distinguished Nigerians that always grace the lectures, as you can see today, demonstrate that Nigerians identify themselves with the noble objectives of the Ariel House. I wish to specifically welcome the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Mohamed Bahari, to this occasion. Mr. President, it sends a long tradition of accepting our invitations long before you became president. Mr. President, we feel highly honored to have you in our midst. Also, I have the honor to welcome uh, the Chief of Staff, who is representing the President Commander Team. I also wish to welcome the Chair of this year's lecture, His Excellency. For accepting our invitation to share the occasion, in spite of his numerous commitments, he is indeed a man of honor and an elder statesman. We are grateful for the honor. Executive governors and as well as former governors here spare their time to greet this occasion. Our excellencies you are all sincerely welcome. Mr. Chairman, Permit me to particularly mention Al-Hadi Badar Abu Bakr, who was my classmate in SBS exactly 40 years today. I wish to welcome our guest lecturer, His Excellency Barrister Simon Bakola Long, 
the Executive Governor of Plateau State and Chairman of Northern Governors Forum. A choice for him to speak at this event is predicated on his track record of achievements, especially around restoring peace and harmony among the good people of Plateau State, Northern Nigeria, and Nigeria as a whole. His Eminence is the town of Sokoto Alexa Ada Bubakar, as we are at the forefront of promoting and supporting activities of our house, especially in the areas of research and documentation. <coughs> Your Eminence, we are most grateful. I wish to welcome the show of Borno for embarking on a tedious journey from Maiduguri to Kaduna. You are welcome, sir. Lastly, I wish to welcome all honorable ministers here present. Distinguished members of Senate and the Honorable Members of House, Comptroller of Customs, Colonel Hamid Ali, Captains of Industry, Security Agencies, former Ministers, Heads of Government, Parastatals, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, we are all welcome. Thank you very much. I think the VC is a better and bigger round of applause. Thank you so much. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to invite our father, the royal father of the day, the Shehu of Bono, His Highness Umar Ibn Gabriel Kenebi, for the royal address. The President, Commander in Chief,
Ines Yubek, Colonel Harvey Ali, Controller General Nigeria Custom, and the families of former governors who established the northern region, that is the families of Alba Kiari, Musa Usman, Usman Farouk, Gomwak, Abdul Baku, and Delhi Benbo, Delhi Jong, Jenny Bo. Thank you very much, sir. That is the VC Ahmadabad University area. Correct me. I'm very grateful. And also to Alaji Adamwena Waziri and uh, Professor Hafiz Abubakar, former uh, Deputy Governor, Kano State. Now we are moving on. It's my honor to play the privilege to invite remarks by the Chief Host, His Excellency Madam Nasr Amir Rafai OFR, Executive Governor of Kaduna State, Deputy Representative here by Al Lady, His Deputy Governor uh, Adiza Sabwa Parabeli. Please, a very big round of applause for her, the speaker. Thank you. Your Excellency, the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who is here represented by his Chief of Staff, Professor Ibrahim Gambari. Your Excellency, the Governor of Plateau State, and the guest speaker at this auspicious event, Right Honorable Simon Bakola Long. Your Excellency, Chief, uh, Your Excellency, Asuajibola Ahmed Tinubu, who is also the Chair of this event. Your Excellencies, the Governors of Jigawa, Kwara, Kebi, and Your Excellencies, the Deputy Governors of Koyi and Ondu. Your Excellency, the former Governor of Kano State, Rabiu Musa Konkosu, members of the National Assembly here present, honorable ministers here present, our esteemed and revived royal fathers, representatives of service chiefs, the Controller General, Nigeria Customs Service, Colonel Hamid Ibrahim Ali, retired. Senior government officials from respective states here present. Distinguished Ariwa leaders. Distinguished sons and daughters of Ariwa. Friends of Ariwa. Members of the press. Invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. I stand here representing His Excellency, Malam Nasser Ahmad Arufai who is unavoidably absent. He has asked that I convey his sincere apologies and deliver his remarks. And these are his words. I am delighted to join you at this distinguished event. As chief host, I have the honor of saying special welcome to Kaduna, to His Excellency Simon Bakola Long, Chairman of the Northern State Governors Forum, who is delivering today's lecture, and to His Excellency Asuaju Bola Ahmed Tunubu, the chairman of today's event. I wish to commend the leadership of Ariel House for their interest in promoting informed discourse. Amidst the challenges of nation building, there is an important duty for our political elites, not only to think deeply about Nigeria, but to discuss these thoughts as part of a collective effort to understand specific and general problems and to propose thoughtful solutions. This commitment to discuss represents an effort at continuity. The generation around Sir Amadou Bello focused on the challenges of being part of a new country. Investing in efforts to accelerate the development of the region they were leading. Just as this is true, to understand and navigate the challenges of their times, the successor generations are obliged to respond to the call of the times. These are indeed tough times, and most of us know, but the duty of elites is to solve problems and lead society to a better place. The northern states of Nigeria have been especially menaced by criminal elements whose toxic footprints have created a crisis of national cohesion. 
no matter the severity of the challenges, elected leaders and other elites must discharge their obligations to enforce the rule of law and protect the right of every citizen to live in peace and safety. I want to thank you for being here at this 11th annual lecture. And I have no doubt that Governor Lalong will give us plenty to think about in his lecture. Thank you very much. I think without I calling for that, another big round of applause for her. She has done wonderfully well. At this particular moment, please permit me to quickly recognize the presence of some of us with due respect to all of us. And that is a call starting from Borno State delegation led by Honorable Elijah Ali Kotoko, member of State House Assembly, representing the Dubri, Honorable Yerim Alon, Karifo, Honorable Commissioner Commerce, Borno State, and then Honorable Engineer Kabiru Wanori, Honorable Commissioner Intergovernmental Affairs, Borno State. And, uh, I would like to also inform you that uh, this particular August gathering is once a year and to everyone that is here is a big plus. So let's all give a big round of applause for all of us being here. Thank you very much. Uh, furthermore, um, he came from Lagos, viewed from southern part of the country. But that is just a little part of him. He is seen as a true patriotic Nigerian and working for the upliftment of Nigeria in particular. No wonder he kept all his own schedules to be here with us. First of all, a very big round for the chairman of this particular occasion, His Excellency, the former executive governor of Lagos State, Jagaban Aswaju Ahmed Bola Tenebu. And this man.
The Sardana was more than just the premier of Northern region. He stood among the founding fathers of our great country. 
the nation building contributions made by Sir Ahmadu Bello can never be overstated. The more importantly, they should never to be forgotten. He labored tirelessly with the great tact and intelligence. Working together with other shining lights of history, such as the late sage, Papa Obafemi Awolo, and the esteemed Inamidia Sikwe, the great Sadano of Sokoto helped establish Nigeria as one indivisible, independent nation. He was one of the chief architects and builders laying the foundation for the nation destined to be the leader of Africa and a model for the black race. It is upon the foundation laid by these extraordinary men that we must continue to build so that Nigeria may achieve its manifest destiny and realize the promise of a greatest too long defied. Let me at this point commend the organizers of this auspicious event for their consistency and perseverance holding this lecture series, which over the years has served as a platform to discuss issues of serious national importance. For a nation to know where it is going, it must first of all know where it is coming from. The topic, reduction of the cost of governance for inclusive growth and youth development in Northern Nigeria in Northern Nigeria in post-COVID-19 era is more than timely, particularly given the serious security challenges that have become one of the primary causes of despair and frustration among all the Nigerians, young and old alike. That frustration and despair are in large part caused by the chronic poverty and the breakdown of social institutions wrought by such long-standing suffering. In the midst of our local challenges came the COVID-19 pandemic with its dilapidating impact on the global and domestic economies. Nigeria, like many other countries, has not been spared the impact of pandemic. Commendably, however, President Muhammad Buhari has been carefully steering the country through the pandemic such that the negative impact on all and the economy has not been as harsh as it must have been. The economy relapsed, though, into recession. It has ended. But we must, we must admit the economy remains anemic and weak. Too much unemployment and resources is still left idle. Cost of governance is always a key factor in social economic development of any nation. But it is also one side of that important coin. We must not look at the cost alone. We must weigh the cost against the benefits derived therefrom. For example, one can pay a high cost on a productive enterprise, but reap a higher benefit. Such would be considered a good investment. However, one can pay a low cost, 
but reap no benefit at all in the endeavor. We inherit the say it's unproductive. They will be a waste. Thus, we must be careful in what we say and truly mean when we talk of cost of governance. The development of any populous nation has always been dependent on the ability of government to allocate sufficient funds to projects and programs that create and encourage enduring growth and employment. We must reject that mode of thinking that assumes government expenditure is inherently unproductive as well as harmful to the overall economy. It is not the fact that government expenditure is instinctively wrong at it. any more than one can say that private sector activity is economically positive. Government can be wasteful, yes, or it can be the key component to growth. Just as a private sector, business can function profitably or spend itself into bankruptcy. The issue is not whether government is spending money or not. The real issue is the economic utility and quality of the expenditure. Physical wisdom, but not necessarily austerity, is required for the economy, like ours, at a time like this, to ensure equitable wealth redistribution and meaningful use of resources. The years have shown that the private sector is, is too weak to spur the growth we need. If the private sector could manage this feat, it could have already done so. Where the private sector is too weak or unable, the government must still fill the void. This means government must not be afraid to embark on active physical policy to create jobs, build infrastructure, and develop our industrial sector as well as continue to improve agriculture. This means governments must spend money, but spend it on those things that bring the requisite economic return for the nation. Here one must make the point clear about the urgency of need to think outside the box in finding solutions to the challenges posed by our unemployed youth. Because of the currency issuing power of the federal government, and I am very glad that the chief of staff is here. Our currency issuing power of the federal government is not bound to the balanced budget like an individual and the state government. Uh, also, because of this currency power, federal government are not constrained by the federal tax or revenue intake, like the states. Just as importantly, what I advocate is not something that can be applied to both the common and unique development challenges of the North or South, so that the nation moves in uniform, in unison, without any group or region feeling left out or estranged in the national progress. Thus, <coughs> thus, why state and local government must shape their budget to fit their revenue, 
federal government can and should spend to create more jobs for the youth in both the north and the south, which is key to eradicating restiveness and sundry criminalities among the youth. Take a look at the world today. Those nations that recovered from that recovered from COVID-19 recovered quickly from 2009 economic crisis and now from COVID-19 are those nations that most engage the government stimulus to revive their flagging economy. This was not accident. It is due to purposeful policy and deeper understanding of the nature of money and at the role of a national government in saving flagging economy. Thus, America recently embarked upon in $1.9 trillion stimulus to boost to boost the economy. It was not said that the government will erode the job, but that it will create them. Thus, it will not be so against government spending. If it is for the right purpose, it can do essential things that the private sector cannot. What we should be against it's wasteful government spending. We are against that. But the spend expenditure that will create jobs for our youth and development of our infrastructure is not wasteful. And we can use our currency to do that. Building vital infrastructure, such as irrigation, water and catchment system. We help agriculture arrest desertification and provide jobs. Only government has the power and resources to call upon such a program. Another readily available area primed for investment in agro-allied industry, which for the northern region is particularly advantageous. Urban population are growing. <clears throat> but urban jobs are not. Here, government must implement a national industrial policy to encourage key industry that can begin to employ this growing urban workforce. Like I said in my recent statement on the present issue of the heart, Harder and farmers disputes. We must appreciate that martial security measures alone will not suffice. Problems that are essentially of an economic origin must also have an economic solution. Enhanced security may be the necessary first step but it cannot be the only step. We cannot resolve this problem by holding on to one-dimensional answers. We must all, dispassionate, all be dispassionate in our search for solutions. These challenges are multifaceted and so shall be the solution must be multifaceted. The issue of insecurity, poverty, unemployment, and extremism has many things to do with governance over time. At the bottom, we must tackle our deep widespread poverty. If we limit our government's role under the erroneous assumption that government spending is intrinsically 
<coughs> unproductive. Then we together enslave failure. We would do well to move critically ourselves out to, to study well our other populous nations, such as UK, US, Germany, and China, charted their course during their formative years. You will see that they did not adhere to a small government or purportedly free market. Government engaged in massive spending on infrastructure and education while also engaged in policy that protected industrial development and key aspects of agriculture, agricultural sector. Only when they matured and held their country and take advantage over other nations did the UK and US begin to champion free markets and small government. We will do well to understand this history and learn when it means for and learn what it means to our own pursuit of development. Permit me to close by thanking our chief host, Kaduna State Government, Malam National Airfly, and commend the graciousness and the strong support for his once again, I thank organizers 